What's up, mobile gamers? It's Dronzer Gigs, and get ready, strap in, because we got another guide for you. I'm super excited for this. Um, I haven't really done too many guides. I've been trying to go in order of when you guys get the heroes, but they've been making a lot of changes to this, so I went ahead and decided that I'd go with Jabali, and he recently got a change, which I think really lends itself to the playstyle I'm going to talk about in this guide. This is how you should play him, and I think that the change is in the right direction of that playstyle. So we'll go over his kit real quick. He's a tank, obviously. He's a vanguard, so his job is to soak up damage and to brawl, and you're going to want to use him a lot in the 5v5 modes, which is control and payload escort so we're gonna go over his kit and the tips and tricks to him um, we'll talk about counters and then we'll get into a match of each of the different modes and talk about how you should play him in those modes so without further ado here's his super shocker weapon um the ammo is only four right and it does fit 560 damage per second now that's not a lot but the reload is fast right so it's a pretty decent gun and I would say that it's a, a very nice fallback option, um, but it is not the main part of his kit and not why you're going to pick Jabali. You're not going to be picking Jabali to do a ton of damage. Um, and if you want to do damage with him, I think the rest of his kit is better for that. So his first active, this is the tactical ability, right? This is what you would call a tactical in something like Apex or something like that. And this is the barrier, right? The shield. It has 30,240 health, which is very, very good. It's very difficult to take this shield out on your own, um, depending on how, like, which damage hero you're playing and how great your accuracy is and stuff like that, and how good the other Jabali is you're shooting. So the shield is your best friend, and it is very, very essential to master. And I think, honestly, if you master putting the shield up and his second active, I think you'll be doing just fine with Jabali. Um, the shield is the backbone to his kit, and this is really what you're going to need to focus on when you're playing Jabali. This is the bread and butter. His second active ability, right, his second tactical, generate electrical spikes in the front that can pierce through shields and heroes. I'll show you guys this um, in the tips and tricks part of the video but essentially it shoots an arc along the ground in front of you so the the description there is a little bit different um but it still does the same thing it still has that 2240 damage that goes along in front of you and kind of it's kind of like a lane ability um if you guys have played anything uh that has like lanes and stuff like that i know a lot of the games on the xbox have that kind of gameplay, but um, I think it's very good, and it is very nice damage. It does help out his damage output a lot. I think that's the main area you're going to look for damage with this because it does go through shields and heroes. So it will, if you have all the heroes in the game lined up, it will go through every single one of them and do damage to all of them. Obviously, you can't actually do that, but in 5v5, it's pretty good, especially if you have like a Vanguard stacked with two healers. You can throw out two of these guys. You do get two charges, and it does quite a bit of damage. He has um, 800, or sorry, 8,400 HP with a 3,500 shield, so his health is very good, nothing to scoff at, and it is uh, what makes him a Vanguard is that immense pool of health and the shield as well. Um, not all of them have a shield the same way Jabali does. So, uh, there is the lone Vanguard blessing, right? If there is only one Vanguard hero in the team, they will receive 20% extra damage mitigation, and it will be invalid if there are two or more Vanguard heroes in the team. I think you don't really need to pay attention to this, but it is essentially another passive for the Vanguard class. So, it's very nice to have if you're the only Vanguard, but I wouldn't rely on it too much. I, like, don't get upset if somebody picks ruby and you pick jabali and you're like they should switch off ruby to give me lone vanguard and i really don't think you're gonna need it um he's very strong without it i think so he does only have one ultimate right now 
Um, it's called Arc Storm. Deal damage to surrounding opponents receiving damage reduction, increasing movement speed during activation. So um, you actually basically turn into a Beyblade and spin around and do that damage. So 35% damage mitigation is very good. Speed boost is 25%, but you're, you're spinning. So obviously you're going to be faster. And it's 4,620 damage per second. And if you look at the health pool of a lot of the squishier heroes, essentially you're going to kill them in one second of this ultimate activation and that is really where you're going to see the damage and the crowd control that Jabali can truly put out that's where you're going to see it is in the ultimate um and i would say you really don't need to focus on doing damage as a vanguard especially as Jabali because of the way his kit works i do have his passive so if you guys don't have his passive i wouldn't really worry about it it gives a 7% weapon damage boost to all of your allies. So this doesn't increase your damage as far as I'm aware, but 7% damage is pretty decent when you consider, um, you know, heroes like Gatlin or Gloria who can output a crazy amount of damage. If you stick with your Jabali, you're going to be doing more damage unless he doesn't have that passive. And I will show that to you guys here real quick. That is his kit. And then we're going to look at the passive real quick because that is where you're going to see the the radius that it has right i'll show that to you guys in the training grounds here because i think the training grounds is the best place to go over Three, all the tips and tricks two, and counters right one, so countdown start. obviously and Easy, if you see careful, this blue me. line right right at the corner there it's got uh the intersect that is the damage boost radius so it is quite a large radius if you put it up against the wall it's almost this whole room right it is almost this whole room if you were to actually take the area of the circle and put it in this room it probably would be this whole room if not more so he's very very strong in the damage category for helping other heroes and what you'll see a lot is you'll see jabalis who rush in and they're doing this and they're trying to get that damage and they get this arc going. That's the arc I was talking to you guys about. It is straight. It is completely straight. So you'll see even if I were to activate it and then turn, it goes wherever you activate it in a straight line. So it is very important that you line up your shots. And if you lead, you got to lead, right? So he was running. This Victor was running. And I used his ability, right? And I didn't track. I'm not tracking the Victor, right? So I miss because I'm not leading the charge that it has so just keep that in mind that is the first tip obviously is uh try to actually hit it right it does a decent amount of damage and then this is his gun right it does quite a bit of damage um but it does not have range you see if you are trying to deal damage i'm firing manually and i can't reach him for a majority of his little run there and i want to say it's about a five meter yeah, I think it's about 5 meters, because right 10, 15 right here, we'll see, we'll just kind of check the range on it. There you go, yep, about 5 meters. So, he is very, very close range on his damage, but I want to tell you guys right now, the biggest tip, do not focus on the gun. The gun is nice, it is very good, it does do a good amount of damage, right? You can definitely get kills with it. But what you're going to find is that that is not going to be your priority, and you're going to die quite a lot if you are using his gun and not his shield. This is exactly right here. This is pretty much all you need as a Jabali is this shield. Now, they did nerf the health to it, but not by too much. And I would say it's pretty much perfect where it is. So you can see he will shoot at me in just a little bit here. But what you're gonna wanna do is use this to, there we go, he's gonna shoot at me here. We'll see, it's going to probably take him quite a while to deplete this, so we'll just talk while he depletes it. Um, this shield is what you're going to use to uh, close that gap, right? If I wanted to kill one of those other victors, I would have my shield up while I'm running, while they're doing damage. And you need to get good at using the shield, right? Because when it is depleted, it will break. And we'll show you guys that in just a second here. And that is really what you need to look out for is that red and then it breaks right well it regens quite fast and you'll see 
a lot of people will basically just do this. They'll just run with the shield up all the time, and they'll uh, do the payload or the control point, and they'll keep the shield up. And you'll have all these guys doing damage to your shield, and essentially what happens is your shield breaks, and it takes a while to regen, and you aren't able to get health. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, why does that matter? I don't really care about getting health. Well, T3 Arena is a team-based game, and Jabali excels at team play. I would say he's one of the best vanguards for it because he is able to give his allies something that not a lot of the other vanguards can, and that is not only the shield, but the damage increase. So you see right here, essentially this victor is going to regen, right, a little bit, and he will get to do damage for free, right? And one of the biggest tips is don't block him with your body. If you didn't know, the pellets that go out of Victor's gun and from everyone else's guns can sometimes hit your teammates. So you don't want to do this when you're trying to help out your teammate by blocking the damage. What you want to do is this right here. You'll see me do this with Gatlins and Glorias. And essentially what you want to do is you want to do any objective that you have and then go help out your team. So I'm staying by him and you can see how much damage this is soaking up. And then we go ahead and it breaks. And it does take a little while to reload the HP of the shield. And you'll find that a lot of the times the HP of the shield does not come back fast enough. It is just long enough for most DPSs to kill you, right? And so what you'll find is you need to use the shield to help your DPS do damage without taking any. So right now, he doesn't have to worry about taking any damage. Essentially, if you were to take a 1v1 and then drop a Jabali shield on the uh, one of the sides, right? Uh, assumably your team side, you have free damage and you're going to win the 1v1, guaranteed. Even if it's a Gatlin, if you drop the shield and you have like the worst DPS in the game or something, uh, Christina or maybe even like a flanker like Johnny, who doesn't do a lot of damage, you can drop the shield and they essentially will win the 1v1 pretty much 9 times out of 10 unless you uh, put the shield up, die right away and then the entire team is not actually waiting for that 1v1 to happen, they're doing damage to you. So the 1v1s are huge. This can turn fights in your favor, it can give you points, it can help you push the payload and it's really what you want to focus on is putting the shield up for your teammates and that also includes your healers, right? Now, a lot of people, they will just do this, and then they'll be like, oh, once the shield breaks, my support will heal me. And so what happens is your support is sitting there doing nothing, and you've heard me talk about this in many of my videos. Your support is sitting there doing nothing while the shield's up. They're not healing you. There's no point because you already have full health, and they can't heal the shield. So you're essentially sitting duck right here, just soaking up damage, soaking up damage, and you have a support behind you, right? So the support can't do a ton of damage to win that 1v1. Even with the shield, it's going to be difficult because they just don't do a lot of damage. And what you'll find is, once this shield breaks, whoever this DPS is, or the other Vanguard or whatever, they're going, they're going to win the engagement even with a support there if the support is not doing their job correctly. And if you kind of drop the ball is Jabali because he can do damage, right? I'm not saying he's 100% a sitting duck, but when your shield breaks, then they can heal you, right? But you're essentially spending half the game like this, making it so your healer is not doing anything and them playing a healer is basically a waste of time unless they're over trying to help out a DPS or something like that. And then at that point, you might as well not even worry about it and play a different Vanguard that can kind of do a little more on their own and isn't is, uh, as defensive oriented as Jabali is. So what I always recommend, right, the biggest tip is to learn the shield, right? If I am closing the gap and I see this cover, I close my shield and jump into cover and wait for it to recharge if it's taking damage. And then, I, and then I'm gonna run and then jump and put the shield up to block the damage from the enemy. You need to basically use the shield off and on, especially for, say, somebody like Christina or Judix, right? You're going to let them shoot the shield, and then they're starting to reload, and you go like this, and you, you go closer and closer to wherever it is you're trying to go, and you basically use the shield sparingly. 
and when you have a support with you, you're going to essentially want to let yourself down to half to um, two-thirds of health or something like that, whichever you feel comfortable with. And then once you're low on health, you put the shield up. So the shield now is taking damage, and that support is then able to heal you back to full, and then you drop the shield again. And so that support is able to heal you while you're doing damage and taking points and pushing payloads. And then if the support is basically unable to keep you at full during the fight, and I get down to like half health on Jabali, I put up the shield, right? Essentially, the shield is for the team, not for you. And that's very tricky because it is a personal shield. This is, he can only move with it right out in front of him. And if you're not out there with your victor or your mark or whoever, you're not going to be able to help them soak up damage with the shield. And you're, by the time you get there, they're dead, right? If I hold my shield to mitigate damage and get there, he's dead. If I keep the shield off, and then I boom, I go like this, and I help him, and then he's got his 1v1 that I'm trying to help him with, he's going to do better, and you're going to see way more success as a team with Jabali, right? And you want to basically either always have health going down with your support behind you, or always have your shield recovering. Because if you're helping out your teammates and giving them that damage mitigation and that shield then it's eventually it's going to crack and then you can go like this and help them out with the damage and maybe regroup with the support or um, go to the point or whatever most of the time you're going to actually want to use this for everybody else on the team you, you do not want to use this to just stand there and soak up damage on the payload and blah 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 I know a lot of people will say that that is not how you should play Jabali if you're playing as a team. If you're, you know, you're playing solo and it's bots or it's a bronze lobby, then by all means, do whatever you want with the shield. But when you're trying to win games or playing at a higher level, even just a slight bit more than a casual player who's solo, if you have one friend and you have a Jabali and they're a damage or a support, it's essentially GG. The entire team will have to band together to kill you because of how high his his shield is and how much health he has. He has 11,000 health, and what you're going to want to do is use that shield as a middle ground to make sure that you're always either healing or blocking damage for your DPSs and other vanguards and stuff like that. And that is where he's going to shine, is using his shield to help the rest of the team and to essentially... Um, combat the damage you know he's supposed to block damage and you see the health it's basically 12,000 and that is a lot of health so don't be afraid to take damage if you're at half health you're still you if you go to half health on this hero you still have more health than the average damage dealer so I would not be scared about taking damage as Jabali. You want to basically make sure you always have your shield ready to help out the team or to help out in those 1v1 situations. Now this, I would say, basically don't drop your shield unless you use the ability and then put the shield back up. So you can actually hit the shield button and hold it and it will stay out, which is very helpful. And then you can hit your tactical, boom, it drops, right? You have the shield up, I'm not hitting any buttons. I hit the button for the fire and it doesn't do anything but the tactical the second active is going to actually drop the shield for you so you don't have to necessarily sit there and hold the button for the shield you can just tap it and it's toggled and it will stay on the battlefield and it's very helpful that way um, the other thing is don't worry about abilities that go through the shield and damage you I would not worry about those. Most of them are inconsequential and you wouldn't need to worry about them anyway. What you want to do is make sure you're angling the shield wherever your enemies are, right? So this victor right here, if I'm playing against this victor, this is what I need to be doing. I need to be following him with my shield so that he is always facing it. Because a lot of the times, the biggest counter to Jabali is literally just get behind him. He's put his shield up, right? And watch this victor, if he runs around here real quick once he starts doing damage there you go I can take damage while the shield is up and that is what a lot of people try and do is they'll put the shield down like this and and try to block like this and that is a way that's a waste of time what you need to do is drop your shield do some damage and then put the shield back up and reposition because 
the act of doing damage will make the enemy move because they have an advantage if they're facing behind you. But the second you drop the shield and attack them, they're going to change position and you'll be able to put that shield up and mitigate that damage a lot easier because they will not expect that. Most Jabalis just keep their shield up and they do this and they turn around and blah 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 and essentially what it does is it allows him when I'm turning around like this to just follow me with his gun. You know even this little bot in the training area is able to essentially now he's turned all the way around and cornered me just from me keeping my shield up and the shield can sometimes be a crutch and that leads us to that counter that you just saw which is get behind the shield right there's not a lot of tips and tricks for Jabali because he's straight up just it's a shield and you need to learn when to use it right and I've given you pretty much all the big examples of how to use it and those ways that you can use it are not really going to affect you in terms of counters right if I have the shield up and I'm using it to help out my teammate then they're not going to even be able to get behind me because if they if they flank to this left side and I'm trying to do this my damage dealer is now able to stay on target against this victor with a shield and then do damage to him so you won't get flanked if you're playing with one of your buddies or your teammates or whatever if you're playing with your teammates you won't get flanked so that immediately alleviates this counter and so the next counter is to isolate Jabali and keep space if I have space like this against the victor he's got me right here once he's further away then you can do more damage to the shield and he's gonna to want to close this gap and most Jabalis will not drop the shield and do damage to you they will sit with the shield and try to uh, create space um, and mitigate that space and while you're trying to create it right so you want to stay as far away from Jabali as possible and use abilities that push him back so zero Kelvin snowball or fades dash is very nice um, hunters ultimate you get three stacks of it uh, two or three I believe and that pushes Jabali back so you want to basically make him waste his shield so that he breaks the shield and he's not close enough to do damage to you yet because you've been keeping space and increasing the damage dealt to his shield and now he has no choice you will kill him if you create space he will not be able to close the gap unless he has his ultimate and the ultimate makes him a sitting duck if you have created space like I mentioned to counter Jabali that is Jabali's weakness is space because even if you have a damage dealer that isn't necessarily as good as Gloria like Mark or something like that he can still do enough damage to break the shield and kill Jabali before Jabali can sit here I mean it slows him down to use the shield and you are going to kill him before he can get to you if you create space and that is Jabali's weakness and that's why I mentioned before you need to make sure that you're using cover and making sure you don't always have the shield on. I see a lot of people will sit like this with Jabali. You don't need to do this. You're already in cover. He can't hit you. You're essentially just giving him free damage on the shield to bring it down into the lower digits. And then you have it in your back pocket, but you can't rely on it because it doesn't have any health. You see, if I keep using it, it's not going to recharge. It's not recharging because now I have failed it. Um, keeping the energy up and using it in a smart way and I don't have it to fall back on anymore so just by playing smart you automatically make your abilities better because you're using them wisely he doesn't have a ton of health regen he has some shield but you can see I'm not regening health so if I take damage and then leave my shield up and then the shield gets destroyed it's gone and that's what you want to bait Jabali into doing is either pushing you with the shield up or trying to attack you when you're far, far away because even if you don't need to get behind him you can still um, get him to waste his shield or his ultimate to try and kill you right so that is one of the other things that is a counter for Jabali the other counter it's pretty simple it's height if you have the shield up like this or you're flanking and you're up high you can get around the shield a lot easier than you can if you were on the ground a lot of maps are like that um, I would say that's a pretty simple counter for Jabali and a lot of the other ones are to basically bait him into being solo because if a Jabali's at, on you solo you essentially don't have to worry about him 
doing any damage to you because he can do this and he can use his gun but if he's solo he has nobody to protect so he's sitting here using a shield for no reason and a lot of the times that's going to backfire especially if you're a dps now his ultimate let's talk about his ultimate real quick and then we'll probably jump into some matches the ultimate is a double-edged sword because it's very very good at crowd control but if you use it wrong, you're a sitting duck and you'll get killed by Glorias and Gatlins during your ultimate because they can just shoot you, right? So never use the, the ult to close the gap. You're better off using your shield intermittently, doing damage and then uh, putting your shield up because the ultimate makes you a sitting duck even though it's fast. I would recommend using it around corners or on objectives. So if I see this Victor coming, I'll use my ultimate boom and that's where it's going to be the most useful. Um, I usually don't use this ultimate unless there's two or more people I can get kills on. If there's one person, don't waste your ultimate, you guys. It does come back kind of fast, but I would rather have it when I need it instead of I use it on this victor and then, you know, five seconds later when my ult's half charged, I got two a victor and a mark and a labula and they're all right here and I don't have my ultimate on cooldown. I always save my ultimates for the most opportune moment. And I would rather sit and play a full game without using my ultimate, knowing that there wasn't a very good time to use it um, that would have been better. So that's just my personal preference as far as ultimates go. Um, and you can obviously use his ultimate whenever you want. It's more of a personal preference. But like I said, this is a counter to Jabali. If he uses his ultimate when he's far away, he's a sitting duck, right? So look how fast this is. Um, we'll try to, let's see, zero, zero meters, right? And we're going to go straight. Hit the ultimate and go straight. And this is how far it goes before it deactivates. There you go. So maybe 35 meters if you count the, the, the time that it takes to get to full speed, right? 25 meters is not too shabby. But remember, you're a sitting duck. So you do damage when you use the ultimate. But they can do damage to you and you have no shield to fall back on. And that is one of the uh, other counters to Jabali. Use his abilities because then you can do damage to him and he won't be able to mitigate that damage. And uh, it, it really is a problem for him. But you can counter that by playing good with the shield and playing by your teammates. Like I said, if you want to be good with Jabali, stay by your team. Play for your team and your teammates instead of the objective or instead of wanting to just get a bunch of kills because you're a tank and stuff and you want to brawl and stuff like that because the gun does damage but i wouldn't say that you should be focusing on that as jabali that is not the the main part of his kit his play style is based on using the shield very smart ways and dealing damage when you can and helping out the team win those 1v1s or those 2v1s and stuff like that so he's very good for holding a point and we'll talk more about like control and um, payload escort in their own individual senses, right? So we do have advanced, uh, the advanced mode on, right? So we will get players and we're going to do a match of control because I want to show you guys some of the mistakes that a lot of people make as Jabali, right? The shield is your best friend, but you don't want to overuse it. And that is how you get countered as Jabali is you use your shield or you don't use your shield and you're getting fired at by multiple people and they will essentially deplete your shield and then kill you and what you want to do is have that balance of shield and health and that is going to take you far as Jabali so we will go ahead and cut to the match so we can talk to you guys about how to play Jabali in the 5v5 control mode Okay, you guys, so I could not find a match with players, so I went ahead and made a private lobby, and I think this is going to be the best way to show you guys how to play him in control. Now, essentially, what you want to do as Jabali is hold this point, right? You want to put up your shield or whatever you need to do to take this point, and then you actually want to leave it. So I know that seems kind of counterintuitive, and with the bots, they basically never miss and shoot a, a ton. Um, we do have a Neon with us, but you want to take this point, right? That is what you want to do. We're going to do some damage to the Fade here. And what you'll see a lot of Jabalis do is this. They'll stand in the corner like this, 
and this essentially does exactly what I told you guys not to do, which is you essentially are not able to um, do the amount of damage that you need to, and then you're just going to use your shield and you die. See what I mean? So I had used my shield and just stood there, and we were unable to take the point. And so a lot of the times you'll see Jabalis with their shields up, and they're just standing in the point, and what you should instead be doing is trying to take it and not sitting in a corner with your shield up. Now, definitely put your shield up if you need to, right? Like right now, we've got a bunch of bots coming in, and they want to take this lane or something like that, right? They want to do damage from this, this part of the map. Now, we can set up and do that for them, right? So you'll see I'm just sitting here doing damage. I'm at 7,000 health. I've lost a ton of health. And we're not going to put our shield up yet because we don't need to. You'll notice I'm still doing just fine. Now, Fade does counter the shield, so we're not going to put it up. We'll put it up now that we have a Neon with us, right? Because she'll be able to heal our health while the shield is up. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't. Obviously, you guys can't answer me, but instead of sitting here in this corner while we're trying to take the point, we've already got the point. I don't need to sit in this corner with the shield up. What I need to do is leave this point and help out my team. So you notice my three teammates have been sitting over here doing damage, trying to get kills, and now they're all dead because I was not with them. And that is why you need to be very team-oriented with Jabali, right? What you need to do is make it so... Yep, I saw that coming. We're probably dead here. Just because the bots never miss, right? So now, if we had our Neon with us and we kept her alive, then we'd be able to stay alive and do more damage. But we have to drop the shield in order to do damage. We're dead here for sure. And now you can see where the shortcomings are going to pop up and pop up and pop up. And eventually you're going to get sick of playing Jabali because you always die, even though you have so much health and so much shield. And I just think that what you need to focus on is the team. They have, We have the point. We're about to take it. And he's going to die, right? I will wait for my team and help this Skady win the 1v1 against the Osas. Or uh, go over here with the Skady and put the shield up so she can do damage against the Fade. And if he rushes, it'll hit me instead. I mean, she's going to die anyway because she's rushing in. But you need to make sure you're using it for the team. I don't. I want to wait. And then, boom, we got Mark and Fade right here. We use the ultimate to kill both of them, take the objective. And maybe put the shield up for a 1v1 if the if the Osas comes in to snipe or the Kazuma's in the air. And that's what you need to do, is you need to help your team win those fights. So we will go ahead and jump into a payload escort match as well and show you guys how you should play those. Okay, you guys, so we jumped into another private match with Three, some bots. Two, I wanted to share an one, exception with you guys. This is payload. the only time you should ever just straight up hold your shield and let them do damage to it. We need to get out of this area and that is what you should be doing is holding up that shield so that you can essentially make it so that your team can get out of that area and still be able to push this payload, right? So you'll notice we're dead here, but what we did is essentially got our team out of the hole because we held the shield up and they were able to do damage through it and I basically sacrificed myself, my shield, my health, all of it. I sacrificed it so that we could move this payload and get out of this corner here that we were in that they had us trapped in. So right here, we'll go ahead and use our second active because they're all standing in the middle. And what you don't want to do is this, right? You want to use the shield smart, and this is not smart. All this does, it still pushes it regardless of if I have it up or not. So running like this, with the shield up does no good so there they've got it and i'm just sitting here with my shield and now all my teammates are dead because i'm thinking i just need to hold the payload and hold my shield up and do as much as i can right we're probably gonna die here because of yeah because exactly why we died is what i was talking about because you need to use the shield as smart as you can and that is not a smart way to use it you need to intermittently use it i would not have the shield up unless you have a teammate next to you and unless they have a right so the fade is right here right but if the cosm is shooting at me put the shield up for sure right but you can see where just running around with the shield up out in the open is getting me killed 
and it's Dragon very tough to goals. play Jabali. And in fact, we might actually lose this game just from those two examples because our team's unable to push the payloads because I am being a detriment to the team. And that is one of the things that's very difficult to understand about Jabali is you have to sometimes play him in a different way that does not uh, deal with the counter. So I wait, let Fade hit me because I didn't want my shield to get destroyed. And I sit here and I'm gonna help the Neon do damage. I've been stunned. I drop the shield so I can get some help for the team. And obviously Fade is a huge counter to Jabali. I would say Fade's a better Vanguard than Jabali, especially if I was making my tier list like I have, if you guys want to go check those out. But what you need to do is use your shield to help win those 1v1s. We're going to try to get some help for the victor. And because there's like three or four people here, we'll use our ult just to show you guys that you do need to use it. Uh, drop the shield, right? We don't want him doing damage to the shield because he'll do damage to the shield and knock it down. And then we use the shield. We don't block the Osas ult unless he's shooting at us. You know what I mean? you got to use the ult in a smart way. And you see, if I didn't have my shield down, I wouldn't have been able to get those two kills and push the payload. And now we can push the payload freely. Nobody's shooting at me. Nobody's on my side. I see that we've got a Victor versus Mark. And we put up the shield so that Mark can dive quicker and we can block the shots the victor has not taken any damage and now that the uh, neon is here we're gonna go ahead and follow her around she is a bot so she's not making smart decisions but um we'll put the shield up now that we're at half health yep we're dead okay like i said fades a counter but we put the shield up when we're at half health then neon heals us and then we can push the payload more and so that is the best example I can think of art. where you don't need to have the shield up even when they're shooting at me. I don't have the shield up unless I need to use it for my teammates or I need to use it to save myself. I will go down to like 2,000 health before I even drop the shield. I'll let them do all this damage to me, right? Not doing very good. We're kind of losing some health. Boom, shield up. And if we had a Neon, if we were playing with one of our friends, Neon would be here helping us, and we wouldn't have died, right? And so you can see where the team play aspect of Jabali is the most essential part of his kit. And you need to make sure that you're using the shield for your teammates instead of just holding it up while you push the payload or holding it up where I'm like, okay, I know they're going to start shooting at me, and I need to get to the payload. And I'm standing right here, they're all shooting at me, and I'm holding this up, and I'm using it, and I'm not moving, and I'm trying to get to the payload. That is not a smart decision, because now, my shield drops, I don't have it anymore. They're doing damage, I cannot put it up until it fully charges back up. And that is why he is very weak to long range. And there you go. And essentially what I need to wait for is the opportune moment to use my shield, when to put it up, and when to help my teammates instead of just thinking, oh, I'm a tank, I need to have my shield up at all times to take damage. And that is not what you want to do. You that need to make sure running. you're using it smart, you're using it in all the most opportune moments, and boom, we're going to use our ultimate here and pretty much probably get a team wipe, almost. Almost a team wipe. And I haven't even put up my shield yet because I don't need it. So we're going to get this fade. We'll wait for him to charge us if he even does. There you go. See, he doesn't charge me because my shield's not up. It's not a counter. So you see me helping my team, doing damage, using my ultimate, taking down the enemies. And I have not put my shield up once. Even though that is the bread and butter of his kit and it's the most important part to learn. So that is how you can use it to have better games and stuff like that. So we're actually going to cut the rest of this out depending on how long it takes me. We'll probably just do the outro for the video so make sure you guys like the video i love doing guides for you guys um we're just gonna let ourselves die and end the match but we're gonna be dropping off tons of guides i love doing guides and i think it is awesome to have the community get better at t3 and learn these heroes especially heroes that maybe seem super simple but actually are very hard to play and you'll find yourself dying a lot with jabali just because you're using the shield at the wrong time, or you're trying to do too much damage, or you had the shield up and the whole team was firing at it, instead of just letting them, letting them 
on your team do damage to the enemy with the shield up and knowing you're going to die. Like in the first part of that private match you saw, I knew I was going to die and I let them kill me so that my team could push the payload and get out of that spot that's very tough to get out of. So you don't always have to be doing damage or staying alive the whole match. You need to be playing for your team as Jabali and I think he is the best when you do that. So that's the guide for you guys. See you in the next one. Peace out.